Marin Theater Company Justice takes a look at the first women on the U.S. Supreme Court. Sandra Day O'Connor, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and Sonia Sotomayor, and sets it to music. Joining us now is the playwright, Lauren Gunderson. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us here on Live What a joy. So exciting. I'm so excited to talk about your musical. And for those who may not know what the musical is about, kind of give us an overall glimpse. Sure. It's about the first three women on the court. These are American icons. American history was changed, I think, very much for the better when Sandra Day O'Connor first took her seat on the bench, followed a few years later, too many years, but a few years later by the notorious RBG, who most people would know. And then, of course, Sonia Sotomayor came not long after and is still on the bench now. And this story really weaves together this kind of unlikely but beautifully powerful sisterhood between these uh, and brilliant women, mm -hmm. um, incredible law uh, uh, understanders <laughs> um, and and really positions them as the icons that um, so many Americans need to know them um, but the other thing that it's really about is hope it's about mm -hmm. how the arc of justice is long um, and even if we have contending ideas about what justice may be we have to work together um, and so what you see in this musical is Sandra Day O'Connor Republican Christian white from Arizona and then is joined by Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, from the from Brooklyn um, Jewish Democrat and they had this incredible fierce friendship and so the idea that we can all share our ideas mm -hmm. work together for the betterment of American justice justice is really what we're singing about. Wonderful. You broke that down so beautifully. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about it. I was going to say, you're making me want to get up and go right now. Great. <laughs> what inspired you, though, to write this particular musical? Mm -hmm. Well, we were engaged by Arizona Theatre Company, which is Arizona's a home state of Sandra Day O'Connor. So they came and said, what about a musical about Sandra Day O'Connor? And I said, amazing, if Ruth Bader Ginsburg is there, too, because now we can talk about diverse opinions. Now we can talk about complementarity. Um, mm -hmm. And we can talk about difference. And that's really what I long for in the theater, is a place to learn about how to be a better person, how to be a strong citizen, how to be somebody who listens. Um, so I come to the theater for that, and you're going to hear some great understanding of American history and American law, um, the Supreme Court, of course, but you're also going to meet three amazing women. Sandra Day O'Connor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg both had incredibly devoted husbands or mothers, um, as well as, you know, feminist icons in their own measure. Um, and Sonia Sotomayor is just what an icon for um, the Latinx community. I mean, being the first Latina on the Supreme Court is, is, is an incredible feat. And to see where she came from, um, this wonderful story about her mother um, and how hard it was for her growing up with diabetes um, to overcome all of that and become this liberal lion on the court right mm -hmm. now. Um, and so I, I look to them. They've become you know personal heroes of mine, um, as well as the just wonderful vehicles for the rest of my team who is not here, um, Brie Loudermilk and Kate Kerrigan, the finest musical theater writing team of our generation. And they're bringing the show to the Bay Area um, and making these incredible women sing. And, and when it comes to the musical part of this, Lauren, it's actually a three-woman musical. Like you mentioned before, oftentimes you don't hear that. It's usually 20 people yes. in a musical. Yeah. What were the challenges of having to tailor it to just three women? Well, we wanted to do something really epic, but also really intimate. So the benefit of that is we get to really know these women. You get to spend real time, and they get to spend time with each other. Um, but the, it's a lot of complexities. You're used to having 15 people sing behind you, so we don't do that. But we replicate that with incredible harmonies mm -hmm. and just these killer solo numbers that just burst out of the top of the theater. So I can promise you that you're going to um, have these songs in your head <laughs> for quite a while. <laughs> I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the overall story, what are you hoping people take away when they come and watch this musical? Yeah, um, a conversation. Um, we want to both start one, but also it is, it is a story about talking to each other and really listening. And even though we come from different places, different religions, different backgrounds, different political affiliations, you can have a real conversation if you treat the person as a person. Mm -hmm. So all of these um, women are so uh, just incredible um, in terms of their American history, but we want to take them, you know, off the pedestal and hang out with them and kind of get say, to know them. Exactly. What do you care about? Who do you love? The stories of both of their husbands and the story of Sonia Sotomayor's family. It's it's just beautiful and heartbreaking and moving. Um, so we really want to, the, the very last um, number sends us to this moment right now. So we start on Ruth Bader Ginsburg's first day in office. Um, 
on the bench. And we really end right now with Sonia Sotomayor on the bench. And, you know, one of the last lyrics is all about hope. Sandra says, um, you know, hope is an endeavor is one of Kate's beautiful lyrics. And the idea that it is, it's a journey. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't always come quick. And you may find yourself at the bottom of it at some point. But this musical will help lift you up and say, you got to get up. And to quote Sonia Sotomayor, you got to get up and fight every day for the things you believe in. And I can't have you here without talking about the Marin Theater Company. Yeah. What has this musical meant to the company as a whole? I mean, they don't really do musicals very much. So we you know, posed it to them and said, this is a musical for people who don't do musicals. Um, but it is something <laughs> that is really smart, really based on, on a lot of things you don't see a lot of musicals about, except for, you know, a very popular one called Hamilton about American history. <laughs> um, and so we are really trying to break the mold. Um, it's an all-femme team. Um, it is uh, a small cast, but big impact. Um, and so I think the community is really wrapping their arms around us. They have wanted this musical. They were so um, so excited and said instantly, yes, 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 we wanna we wanna bring this to the Bay. And it's you know it's important for me. But I'm I'm a Bay Area um, writer, and to be able to do this in my backyard in my community, it, it just means the world. So. Yeah, and the Bay Area is just so amazing when it comes to theater as a whole. Oftentimes Chicago gets all the love, but the Bay Area needs to be uplifted Heck because yeah. it's getting its thing done. It really is. We can rival any city in America for <laughs> the power, the excellence, the diversity of the theater making here. Big companies, small companies. You know, we've taken a lot of things to Broadway. We've taken them to the West End. We've they've become pl plays produced all over the world. That it started right here. So I hope that this musical um, will be a part of that story, and the Bay can be really proud of their part in our musical and the musical's part in Bay Area history. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us here on Live in the Bay. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. What a dream.